Back here at the WEC in Newark, New Jersey, and uh, Binghamton getting the victory. A thrilling game, came down to the wire. A couple of un unbelievable individual performances. Binghamton, though, wins 77-75. It is time for the RAF report, certainly the highlight uh, of the night, obviously with the Highlanders going down. Uh, Jeff Rafferty, top assistant, thanks again for joining us here tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. I guess we'll start on, on the positive side. I mean, you were really active in the recruiting of two kids from Georgia, Zach Cooks and obviously San Antonio Prince. And you look at what they did tonight, their <coughs> ability to become big-time scorers and rebounders on the other end of the floor. Talk about their maturation and uh, watching those guys play and take it to another level tonight. Well, obviously, Zach, you know, Zach's had a very good two-plus years here for us um, since the midway point in his freshman year. He's been one of the better guards in the league. Um, and again, he, he showed that ability tonight. He can really score the ball. He can... Uh, have a major effect on the game um, at both ends. Uh, San Antonio Brenson um, really showed what he could do tonight. Um, you know, 2011, we were ahead at the half and in in, in by eight, I think. And I think the only reason we were ahead at, at the half by eight is because of San Antonio Brinson. I thought he had a great mindset tonight. I thought he really pursued the ball on both classes. Um, and he obviously, he, he attacked the rim. He, he, uh, he really attacked the rim, got to the free throw line. Um, you know, it's just uh, those two guys, certainly from a statistical standpoint, played very well tonight. Um, we needed some, some other guys to, to, to step up and maybe a third or fourth guy. Um, you know, and, and it was a great individual, you know, matchup, you know, between Zach Cooks and Sammy Sessoms, their kid. But that also, um, I think it got away from us a little bit when they kept going back and forth, back and forth. We had a lot a lot of, of bad possessions in the second half. And and, uh, and I think, you know, that ended up costing us quite a bit. And, you know, once you give a kid, def defensively, once you give a kid like Sesame some rhythm, um, he can be hard to guard. And, and, you know, we played ball screens multiple ways tonight and, um, you know, changed it up. And, and I just thought he got he had too much confidence. The last two or three threes he hit, it didn't it didn't matter which defense we had on him. And they were, they were deep threes, they were guarded threes, and, and it was just the, the shots and the possessions leading up to that. Um, he was really feeling it, and, um, you know, he came out on top. They came out on top. Yeah, and you had warned us, that was me, before the game, that you say you have to be careful with a team like Binghamton when they have a guy who is an elite scorer, an elite player, he can get hot and carry a team. He got some help today. Brenton Mills, I thought a freshman, played very well off the bench. The big kid Tinsley, you know, got some big rebounds late. Yep. Uh, so there was an all-around performance there with Sessoms being the headliner. Now, you're going to look back and see some film and, and try to see what you can learn from this game. Just right now, native to just watching the game, is there anything that stands out that you can see as a building block or something that uh, you can work on as a result of what you saw out there tonight? Um... I don't know. I mean, we got off to a good start, which is, which is, um... You know, the last couple that that was kind of a that was kind of our Achilles heel early in the season or the first three games and the last two games we've played better in the first half, which is we need to continue to do it. But now it's you know, now we needed to close the game tonight and we got up sixteen points, I think, with twelve minutes to go. You when you're at home and you're the more veteran team, you gotta close that game out and um you know, I'll I'll have to watch the film to come up. I'm, Usually a pretty optimistic guy. That, that was a tough loss to take tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. I will say, too, uh, 100th game for Shaquan Gibbs, a senior who's meant a whole lot to this program. Sure has. There's something calming about the ball in his hands down the stretch, and that's not just saying because what he did with the game-winning shot inside of a second against Cornell, but even here he had three big baskets, tough kind of that patented Gibbs intermediate-range fadeaway yep. shot. How cool is he uh, to have as your point guard when that situation occurs? Well, y yeah, I mean, you gotta, y you got him who plays very composed. Um, and, he, and he's made some big threes in his career, but like you said, he, he's got that mid-range game too. And um, and I think him and Zach do an excellent job playing off of one another. And, and um, so I think Zach opens up some things for Shy, and I think it's vice versa as well. I think Shy opens up some things for Zach. So, you know, unfortunately we just, uh, there wasn't enough possessions tonight, I guess, where uh, where we could all help one another and, and, uh, and escape with the win. We just, we, we uh, it's a heck of a college basketball game, and they, they, that team is, is playing really hungry and with an edge, and 
you know, they never quit. And they were down 15 to nothing. I kept telling the guys they were down 15 to nothing for a sacred heart the other day. And they were 0-3, and their backs were to the wall, and they came back and won that game. And, and uh, you saw the same type of grit and toughness tonight. So they got a good young team over there, and, and uh, they're going to be a little bit better than I think people think. And we need to... Uh, to, you know, lick our wounds and dust ourselves off, and we need to have a good practice tomorrow and a good practice Friday, and we go back on the road now for the first of four. I think we got four in a row on the road, and we're going to play a very, very tough Brown team who was who was three and zero, oh, and then last night they got whacked by Sacred Heart, so they're going to be hungry, and and uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a long season. Um, it can be a grind at times. It's early in the season here, and we got to uh, we got to we got some corrections to make. Um, Certainly defensively, but offensively, when we get stagnant, we, we got to stop settling for, you know, one pass, two pass, contested shots, you know. So we got to, uh, we, we got some work to do. Well, luckily, you do have a, a veteran group now, a lot of guys that have played together for several years to kind of rebound and get back to the winning ways. And we got a little time before uh, the next wrap report, unless we can get some money out of the budget and take it to the road, which would be nice. But uh, if not, we'll have to see you here uh, when you're back home on December 11th, taking on UMass Lowell. As always, it's a pleasure, and I know that was a tough loss. You've said that a couple times, but uh, your time, valuable, especially to all the viewers. So thanks for coming on to the uh, latest edition thanks of the Thanks for Raptor the people Force. that support us and come to the games and watch the games on ESPN3 and, and uh, support the post-game show. So maybe next time we can have a little better note. Um, better next news. time will be a much more energetic and electric version of the rap report, I promise, because the Highlanders can take care of business. I'm, I'm putting a lot on your shoulders now, but I know you guys can get it done. <laughs> Coach, thanks again. You bet. Thank you. All right, that's Jeff Rafferty, top assistant here at NJIT. I'm Matt Providence, and thanks again for watching this edition of the rap report.